So when a spot illustration requires color, that means that whoever you're doing it for, whether you're doing it for yourself or for a client, means they're gonna pay about four times more to create it because color requires four times the ink as doing something in just a single color. So choosing the right colors is incredibly important. And it's really difficult to choose the right colors from the millions of options that are given to us in the computer. Just kind of out of context. Oh, this is a nice sky blue. I'll use that, right? That's really tough. So instead, don't sweat it too much when you're doing the flatting. Just pick colors that you think are kind of close. Like I know I kind of want a yellow for the magnificence coming off the buildings. And so I'll use my paint bucket, go to my flat color layer and just drop it in. And there we go. Or for these trees, I know I want them to be green. So I'm gonna select with the magic wand, hold down shift, get multiple selections of these trees. Some of them are contained, but a lot of them aren't. So always be mindful of when something bleeds outside of what you want. And it's really only a problem when it bleeds out to the outside of your illustration, right? Okay, I think I've got most of the trees. I'm not gonna click that because I know that bleeds to the outside. I'll get these little blades of grass. And it can be tough using this magic wand precisely. So it's the tip of the wand that's where you're selecting. So selecting that empty white space, you just place the tip of the wand where you want it to be. Okay, now I move to the flat color and I use my paint bucket. First, I'm gonna pick a different color, make this look more like tree green. I like to use a lot of chromatic grays, so closer to the, the gray spectrum side than to the full saturation side. But it's up to you, you can use color as you like. And then I just drop it in and you see those trees. Okay. What can help you with your color selection? Right now, as soon as you've set up your little sandwich, your basic coloring sandwich with white bread on the bottom, with your black line art at the top and with your, your color in between, it's just like we're making peanut butter and jelly right now. Just simple flat layers of color. It's, you want to save your work. So I'm gonna save this as spring 2022. Okay, now that I've saved it as a PSD, now I can keep working on it and I can keep supporting all these layers. It's a good time to start finding some inspiration, right? So I have in these slides, my favorite digital colorist working today in comics is a guy named Dave Stewart. And he, to be a professional colorist means you actually have to do a lot of work to make a living. Colorists don't get paid nearly as much as pencilers or inkers. Uh, inkers don't get paid great, but they still get paid better than colorists. And that's because people don't understand how hard it is to digitally color. But Dave Stewart is just a master at it. Here you see his flats. Here you see his flats with the, the line art that Mike Mignola gave him. And here you see his finished, very subtle duotone and sometimes full spectrum variations on it. But in order to choose the right colors, I find it really helpful to find inspirations. So often there's inspiration from animation, from old comics. Old comics had very limited color options based on how the inks were mixed. And it's, it's a lot harder now with millions of colors to know what to choose, right? And often we can overdo it, especially when we get into full spectrum. So I'll use Google Images. So I'll do campus building spot. So though college campuses are not the most exciting thing to have spot illustrations of, you'll see that 
these kind of cartoon campus maps have been done before. And we can steal colors from reference images without any fear of violating copyright, right? Because what we're doing is stealing color, not stealing the artwork. Oh, I like these, actually. So it doesn't even matter if they're high resolution or not. I'm going to open that in a new tab. It doesn't matter if they're copyrighted. These are all from stock sites. So these are all copyrighted. What we're going to do is just steal the color from them. This is a lot of the colors of our campus, right? The kind of red brick with the, the tan mortar. So what I need to do, I need to drag and save these into my folder. Oh, this is a free vector account. Let's see. Let me save the easy ones first. Ah, keeps redirecting me. I'm going to have to do it this way. All right. I can also do a screen grab of it. <laughs> or just open the image alone. There we go. It doesn't even matter if it's really small like this. As long as you can save it. There it is. Okay, now I'm going to take those. This is a, a super helpful trick, and it's going to help with digital painting, too, later on. I'm going to open them in Photoshop. So I'm going to take my reference color images, all three of them, right-click and say Open with Photoshop. It's going to open them in new tabs along the top. You can see them. And what I'm going to do is say Window Arrange, and I want to say 3 Upstacked. And then I can move them around. So I'm going to move this one into the top, or maybe into this bottom stack. So down here, I can move between these two. I'm going to choose the two I like the best. I'm going to go ahead and make my screen pretty big. And I can move this border. And this basically becomes the palette that I can steal colors from. These different buildings. All right, so how do we steal colors? So I'm, I'm on mine now. And what I'm going to do is use my paint bucket. And instead of having to go to my foreground color selector, I can just hold down Option, and it will change it to the Paint Drop tool or the Eye Drop tool. So if I want to take this color, I just click it, that will change that to my foreground color, then I let go of option and I drop that color in. Or I can try this color out, drop that in. I can try this color out, drop that in. I can try this color, this color. So many nice options. But if I drop something in where there's not color, I'm going to fill up too much, right? So that's how we can use inspiration image images and steal color from them. Okay, so in the last five minutes, I just need to do more of what's called the kill whitey phase. Because I need to make it so all of these are things I can select. So what I recommend is that I duplicate the blank white layer, my white bread layer. When you duplicate it, it will unlock it. You duplicate by hitting Command J. And then I'm going to say Edit Fill with Middle Gray, 50% Gray. That will show me the things I need to still fill in. And I'm going to fill in as much as I can with the magic wand that's contained. So I'm just going to hold down Shift with Contiguous from my black bread layer. 
I'm just going to grab all of this. You have to be careful not to actually click on the black lines. And it's a lot like stained glass, like all the little pieces of colored glass that go between the black lines. That's what I need to fill with a color to finish my flat coloring. And by Monday's class, where we want to be is to have the flats filled in so that we can talk about duotone and full spectrum options and special effects next class. And next class is when it's due. So save your work, put it on your flash drives, your thumb drives. You can use PhotoP to digitally color in the exact same way. You can bring your EPS as a smart object into PhotoP. You can open up your PSD saved layer file in PhotoP and continue working on it even if you don't have Photoshop. Because it does take time, depending on your illustration, to fill in all of these areas. Get rid of the empty space. And that's why if you want an entry level digital art job, flatting is, is one of those jobs because that, this is what you're doing. There's no shortcut for it. But then once we have all of it selected and filled in with some color, the world opens up to us and it becomes like an interactive coloring book where we just have lots and lots of options. So it's worth doing the work. Now the only thing that's a little burdensome is when you have un unenclosed shapes like I have for the campus green. how we can get that selection, right? And then we just have to use the lasso and work behind the black lines, like we are coloring it in Illustrator. But it's not that burdensome. It's just a little bit harder than what we're currently doing. So I can do all the butterfly shapes. I'm just gonna select them all and I'm gonna choose like a fluorescent green to fill them with. And I'll post these videos as soon as this video is over, so you'll have it to reference. Okay, I think that's everything that I can that's not open. I think everything else is open. Open shape. So now I'm going to go to the paint bucket, and instead of going here and selecting, I'm just going to steal from one of my reference images and pick the fluorescent green from here, the really bright green, and then just drop it in on my flat color layer. And I'll see which ones I missed. <laughs> I didn't miss much, but I missed some. All right. And so except for this little shape, which I can get quickly by using the magic wand. I'll fill that in. Let's try. Let's try the blue or the gray. There's some nice grays. There we go. Nice and bright. So what's so great is now that they're filled in, I could just take that same gray and apply it anywhere I want just by clicking. Because if I turn the black lines off, these are all separate shapes. Like a mosaic. Beautiful. Inspiring. Like a Byzantine church. <laughs> 